okay, let's do it. I've got my detective hat on. Let's talk about the height. SR65, 65% keep, which is the $400 keyboard is for gamers looking for high-end typing hardware, apparently. So I am a keyboard enthusiast. What does that mean? Does it mean I spend a lot of money on keyboards? No, there's plenty of keyboard enthusiasts that have not spent a lot of money on keyboards. It means that I enjoy customizable typing feel, tunable sound, and of course, to choose my own kind of aesthetics, right? I'm also looking for other things like, you know, easy customizability, good software support, that meaning onboard software support so the keyboard actually has everything on it. I don't need any third-party software to actually use it. Stuff like that. Okay. So let's let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. So this thing is in the news. Yay. And I am making this video to make sure that the people that are going to be baited into buying this keyboard have a think about it before doing that. Okay. So let's go. This is on thinkcomputers.org. Thank you, Think Computers. So apparently height, the new PC components, peripherals, and lifestyle brand. Lifestyle brand. For, for the record, just so you guys know, I work in marketing, okay? Lifestyle brand means nothing. It just means we're going to charge you more money for a thing. I work for a lifestyle company. I know. So it's I buy power. I buy power. And I buy power when it comes to their, like, uh, pre-assembled computer cases and stuff like that, they're not bad, they're not terrible. But if you've ever worked in retail or spoken to somebody that works in retail or distribution, you know that the markup on peripherals is where the real money is, okay? So yes, they are a leading manufacturer, fantastic. So the hype will be the height, uh, see? They already want us to think that it's hype. Will be available for pre-sale in a limited 1,000 unit run. First of all, why are you limiting it? You're an actual company. Now, when in, uh, keyboard enthusiast makers, hobbyist makers like me, I produce keyboards as well, make keyboards, we'll set a maximum amount to be run because we simply can't handle the logistics, right? And in terms of pre-sale, the reason why, you know, hobbyist makers will do a group buy or a pre-sale is because we don't have the upfront money to put down a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars to make all the keyboards and then sell them, right? So this makes no sense. Why are you doing this? If you're limiting it, that makes me feel like you're just trying to FOMO me, which, okay. And then pre-sale just literally makes no sense. I mean, if you're an actual brand, you should be capable of doing your own R&D and then making a production run. That's my take. So it comes in a frosted polycarbonate base. It's pretty cool, okay? It's, it's not the worst looking thing. That USB port could be better. And once we get later into this segment and we talk about the things that I would expect from a high-end keyboard that are not here, that's one of those things. But polycarbonate base, bead blasted satin silver aluminum top case. Bead blasted aluminum is fairly standard for keyboards. Silver just means clear anodization. The keyb, terrible nomenclature, will come fully loaded with some stabilizers and some switch variants. Duroc, by the way, is JWK. Uh, that is the switch manufacturer. Uh, I personally am not fond of JWK because their price is exorbitant for the quality that you get, which actually melds very well with this keyboard. So, and then it says to further enhance the user experience, it'll come standard with an all new suspended gasket mount for improved typing sound and feel. Well, uh, a gasket mount will... We'll find another news story that shows the internals, but the idea of a gasket mount is you have the plate of the keyboard, which, uh, do I have a plate over here? I probably do. Give me a second. Yeah, of course I do. So this is the keyboard plate, okay? The switches go in it, fairly standard. And then the switches, they go in the PCB. So instead of being mounted up top to the aluminum, instead it's just surrounded by rubber and being smushed in place. That's the simplest method of explaining it. Does it mean improved sound? Not necessarily. Does it mean improved typing experience? Not necessarily. It's just different. It's like saying we've improved this espresso by putting a little bit of milk in it. Well, no, you've just made something else, which, okay. 
So the matte black laser shine through ABS keycaps. This is a big red flag, by the way. If you're talking high end, okay, uh, you guys are gonna have to excuse my very messy desk. If we're talking high end, shine through is not really a thing on the high end. And I've got my overlay on, let's pretend it's not there. Generally, what we're looking for is either a double shot ABS or die sub PBT. They feel good, they sound great, they're nice thick keycaps, they're a bit expensive, obviously you get what you pay for, but that's what we're talking about when it comes to the higher end. When it comes to laser engraved, laser engraved by the way is like the bottom of the barrel in terms of keycap quality, shine through ABS, that's not a selling point. If anything, you know, I'd rather just buy an OEM, I'd rather just buy a cheap razor board. You know the the optical one or get a nice uh, steel series hall effect or something like that so as well as the selected switches will come packaged in separate trays with the key for a hybrid custom experience that doesn't even mean anything what does that mean i mean obviously you'll be able to use other switches in it which okay that's fine i guess but so can every other keyboard on earth users will be able to fully program each key as well as the rotary wheels, which by default controlling the preset lighting via the height nexus software. That we don't like, okay? If if you've ever used a gaming keyboard where it needs software to connect to the internet for you to use the freaking thing, it's really annoying. Uh, in, in the enthusiast makerspace, uh, what we have is QMK, which is fully open source, anybody can edit it. Uh, all, the, uh, all the macros, all the customization is stored physically on the keyboard. So I can literally just grab this keyboard, which I have key combos, for example, that'll type in usernames and passwords just built into the keyboard just for my ease of use. I can take this, take it to the office, take it to a friend's house and press that key combo and it just works fine. Uh, I can also you know, control the lighting, control everything from here. I can control the layers, I can do whatever I want. It's pretty cool. Okay, so it comes with 138 RGB LEDs. That's a lot, okay. If, if you wanna go super hard on RGB, that's fine. But again, I'd just buy a cheaper OEM keyboard because the price point for this, oh, they haven't even mentioned the price point, but we'll get there, and right there, $400. The price point for this is kind of rough. Like, what are you doing? All right, so yes, the, the RGB goes through the frosted polycarbonate. Yes, that's what translucent things do. Okay, so cool. That's all we've got and then let's see height.com msrp of 400 us dollars so let's talk about what that 400 us dollars means actually let's talk about this one because this is bare bones so this will not come with switches okay because generally in the uh, enthusiast hobbyist keyboard space you don't get switches you just get a kit so let's say 350 us dollars what can i get for 350 us dollars that's actually decent Hmm. Well, this right here, this is a cipher. It's a different layout. It's not a 65%. This was 320 US dollars in stock, by the way. It was no pre-order. So you didn't pay for it and then wait for them to make it and then ship it to you. So basically it just comes with, you know, the case, the plate, the PCB. Okay. And it's all aluminum, right? Top and bottom. And the color of the aluminum is matched very nicely. And it has been optimized by the maker for a very particular typing style with a very particular typing sound and feel, right? That effort went into it and it's cheaper. And there were only 50 units of this. So uh, some of you that may not understand economies of scale, if I make 50 of this, the unit price is a lot more expensive than if I make a thousand of this. If I make a thousand of this, this wouldn't have been $320, for example. This would have been maybe $220. Now, how the hell is this $220 made by just like one person working hard in his basement? He's not actually in his basement, but you get me. Versus the height, which is 350 from a major company? Okay, that doesn't make sense. All right, so here's example one. Let's go. To example two, because we're we're gonna stick with non-OEM, even though what we're looking at is an OEM board. Okay. All right, let's grab this. The keycaps on it are terrible. Don't judge me. 
They're just placeholders. This is a Geonworks F1. This weighs one, uh, sorry, this weighs 3.2 kilos. That is 6.8 or 6.9 pounds. It has six internal brass weights. It uses a mounting system that is revolutionary. Never been done before, okay? Again, keyboard kit comes with the plate, uh, the PCB, and the case. Very heavy, a lot of detail went into it, a lot of machining work has gone into it, a lot of quality control has gone into it. This particular unit was $318. And not from a major manufacturer. Okay. Maybe, maybe let's look at another example. Okay? Let's look at another example. I'm kind of running out of examples here. This is to give you an idea of the low end. This was $80. Again, case, PCB, plate. This particular model has no plate, it's plateless. But the case, which is plastic, was $80. Again, not run by a large manufacturer, not OEM. Okay, this was custom. So I can have my custom feel, my custom sound, all of that stuff. All right, let's 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 get back to it. So the price point. It's a big no-no. The price point is a big no-no. The method in which it's being sold is a big no-no. I feel like we're going to see a lot of the same exact story like this. This is the exact sentence we saw there. So I assume I buy power or whoever it was basically wrote this news story and sent it to all the news people, and they rewrote like a couple words and posted it. Hopefully some of them will have different pictures. Let's keep, let's, let's, let's actually look for something of some use. Okay, I think this one I had checked out before because it has a picture of the internals. All right, here we go. Heights $400 keyboard melds gamer and enthusiast sensibilities. It really does. Okay. I, I enjoy playing games and I have a dedicated, I have a dedicated keyboard for playing games and I'll show it to you and I'll recommend it to you guys because it's fantastic. High end enthusiast. Keyboards are marvels of engineering and design. They are. This is not. Again, that's my opinion that this is not, but like objectively, it's very, very different. With cases cut from bead blasted aluminum. Well, the cases are cut from aluminum. Yes, and then they're bead blasted, but sure. Suspended gasket mounts. Uh, for, for the record, suspended doesn't mean anything. It's just a gasket mount. And convenient features like hot swappable key switches. Uh, convenient features like hot swappable Key switches are not very enthusiast. Uh, why that is, is a whole thing for another day, but e. All right, gaming keyboards are all RGB lighting effects, sleek angles, shine through keycaps, and eye catching bells and whistles. I mean, gaming keyboards is RGB. That's what determines a gaming keyboard, like gaming keyboard versus just a good OEM keyboard. So it's time. This is a Leopold FC700. This is like a nine-year-old model. This thing will last your entire life. This was maybe $130 at the time of purchase. The keycaps on it are not the ones that came with it. Okay, I changed them out. But the switch is inside. The, the, the board itself has not been modified for the past nine years. I still game on it every time I game. It's fantastic. This, yep. Does it have a buttload of RGB? No. I'm not big on RGB, but if you're big on RGB, you can pick yourself up a similar Corsair or a Razer or something like that. Generally, you want to go for a company that is established and knows what they're doing. If you're going to buy an OEM, which this, this board is an OEM, okay? They keep saying, you know, enthusiast and whatnot, but it's not an enthusiast board. It's masquerading as an enthusiast board. And if you're into other hobbies, for example, let's say whiskey. Uh, yes, whiskey is a hobby. Nobody panic. You'll find that, you know, there are like local craft, very, very like authentic, uh, what's the word, artisanal makers that make fantastic stuff that goes for like $5,000 a bottle in the aftermarket because it's so good, right? And then you've got big companies that'll claim, oh, we're making craft artisanal whiskey, but it's not that, you know, it's not that. You taste it, it, it tastes like something that, you know, came out of a big machine instead of anything that was touched by human hands and actually molded. Same thing goes here, okay? If this was a whiskey, it would be the most 
chemical tasting whiskey of all time with a label that says, oh, mom's and pop specialty whiskey made, you know, in, I don't know, Frattenberth, New Mexico. No. All right. 400 bucks. Fully loaded. Yes, yes. Any any more information? It does have these knobs, which is pretty cool. I do enjoy knobs. This is something you will not get on a enthusiast keyboard. So if you like knobs, still buy a different board. There are boards with knobs. So the SR75 includes dedicated media keys. So just so you guys understand the concept of dedicated keys, I know that a lot of people come from uh, a gaming background and don't know anything about custom keyboards, but when it comes to dedicated keys, I can reprogram any of this. This can be a dedicated key to play my music. This can be a dedicated key to send a Discord message to my mom. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, you know? Just these have pictures on them for like the media things, which is fine. Like if you really want that, go for it, but not in this particular port. Get a good OEM. All right, I'm just used to seeing more space economy in many, in my small footprint keyboards. It's like racing stripes on a fuel efficient compact car. This makes no sense. This is a small pricey keyboard aimed at the gaming market we'll, where things like media controls can come in handy so I can see where the height is coming from. This is actually like a decent story because it plays a little bit of devil's advocate, but it's still not great. So same information. Uh, papa, they say the inside is just as pretty. Let's have a look at the inside finally. So looking at the inside, we can see that the top level is the keycaps followed by the switches, right? We've got the top case here with the plate and the PCB is right under the plate. And then under that PCB is a small gasket, it looks like. So it looks like the gasket basically shoves the plate into the top as you assemble it together. Fine, yeah. So it all screws together and you've got the plastic bottom and there's probably some dampening material in here because it didn't sound good to begin with. And then you've got what I can, what they consider adjustable feet, but it's not adjustable if you just remove them and then there are no feet. That's not an adjustment. Again, I, I, I'm not trying to be such a dick just for the purpose of being a dick. I'm trying to be a dick because at this price point, you can buy three much nicer keyboards if you're a gamer or one fantastic keyboard if you're looking for an enthusiast board. That's my take. All right. As it should as it should at its price point, in my experience, $400 is the lower end of the upper end when I'm shopping for a very, very nice mechanical keyboard. I'd say $400 is middle end for an enthusiast level 65%, in my opinion. It's where I start shopping hardcore designers like Rama. Uh, for the record, Rama is not a hardcore designer. TGR is a hardcore designer. Uh, Rama does larger runs. Rama literally makes more keyboards than they plan to make. He does more than a thousand keyboards per run. So yeah. All right, let's, that's it. Oh, but height seems to be focused on high-end designs with striking engineering, going by what the company's announced so far, plus mechanical keyboard hobby insiders and creators like Alex and Apiary have provided feedback on the design of the key. They haven't. They have not. That is literal false information. Okay. Feel free to do your own research, but Alex and Apiary have both specified that we had no creative input. They asked us some very generic questions that we had no idea we were going to go into making a keyboard. And then they made a keyboard and now they're saying, oh, we're involved. Imagine if you are, I don't know, a connoisseur of of nut buttons. Nut. Okay. You are a connoisseur of nut buttons. And somebody just asks you in passing, hey, what's your favorite color? And you say purple. And they make a purple nut button and they go, oh, approved by Black Simon with input from Black Simon. That's literally the amount of involvement that they had. And the fact that they're being so freaking sneaky about that is another huge red flag. It really is. All right. I think finally we're going to look at the aesthetics and the actual design from a uh, from a high-end mechanical keyboard perspective and see how it actually compares. And then I'll recommend you a lot better OEMs, okay? Let's just go to images. God, that's on freaking PR Newswire, Jesus. Uh, 
Okie dokie. So from the top, okay, this is a mirrored image for some obscure reason. So the, imagine that this is the right side and that is the left side. Like that's caps lock, that's your arrows. I don't know why it's inverted, but it's inverted. So the, the keycaps look like bottom of the barrel, maybe $5 keycaps that are produced in China that are commonly used for uh, brands like uh, Razor, Corsair, Logitech, stuff like that. Literally bottom of the barrel, where uh, the uh, the legends will rub off very quickly, the shine through will not be great, uh, the caps themselves will be very thin. Uh, these can probably be had for like $5 a set at a large enough MOQ. I'm really guesstimating here, all right? Uh, we know that the top case is aluminum, Okay, they say bead blasted and they say silver anodized, but they never specify if it's machined uh, or, or cast. So if it is cast aluminum, which I believe it may be, the price point is atrocious. If it is machined aluminum, the price point is slightly less atrocious, but still atrocious. Uh, the difference between machined and cast is machined. You'll have uh, very clean angles, uh, very few imperfections in the actual feel when you're uh, when you're touching the sides or the top. Uh, whereas with cast, you might see some you know some very very light changes, but one is far more expensive than the other to do. Uh, we can see here the bottom is polycarbonate. Judging by the ridges in it, this is cast for sure. This is not uh, uh, CNC'd or machined, meaning their cost of production is substantially lower than a standard high-end keyboard. Normally when you make a high-end keyboard for enthusiasts, what you're doing is you're using the most refined methods in order to machine and finish that particular keyboard. You wouldn't do something like having a cast bottom. For me, that's not a high-end thing. Uh, does a cost does, does a cast bottom negatively impact your typing sound or your typing feel? No. Does it impact your aesthetics? A little bit if you're really paying attention, but no. It's all about what's actually being delivered to the table. Okay. So that's what I can figure from the outside. Let's have a look at the back. This is apparently one of the favorite photos right there. Oh God, that's terrible. Can I just have this slightly larger, please? Please? Nope. Okay, I guess we're gonna have to go to like over here. I think the first one had uh, decently large pictures. There we go. Okay, we see the USB port is recessed very, very heavily in there, which uh, for day-to-day -day use of like a standard gaming keyboard where you've just got a standard USB cable, that's not a problem. You can get it in there. Uh, but if you're dealing with enthusiast level things, then you're dealing with like very custom USB cables that are far, far thicker than a standard USB cable that literally just will not fit in the hole. So that is something that in terms of high end is big, big nope. Uh, random branding I can kind of survive with, like, I don't hate it. It's fine. You can brand your keyboards. I'm not going to be mean about it. Uh, in terms of the swept back aesthetic, the aesthetics are cool, at least in terms of the design. Uh, the caps sit a little bit too high, which means if you're looking at it from an angle, you're going to be able to see your switches as well as the light pouring out. That's generally not recommended. And then in reality, we'll have to see if the top and the bottom actually fit together properly, if the quality control of this is as good as the renders imply. Historically, looking at iBuy Power, it's possible, but the fact that they're using a special purpose vehicle uh, to, to produce this keyboard, that's another red flag. A special purpose vehicle, for the way, uh, by the way, just so you guys understand, uh, understand, is a type of company where, let's say, I am Black Simon Industries, and I want to produce, I don't know, a vape. But I have very little faith in my ability to actually do it, and I don't want to risk my own company. So what I'll do is create a special purpose company called Black Vape, which I own, but is its own separate entity that will produce said vape. And if it flops and the company goes bankrupt, it doesn't hurt my main company. That's what a special purpose vehicle is. If this was being uh, made directly by iBuyPower, I feel like I would be less terrified, but that doesn't really change much because of the price point that we're looking at. All right, let's finally talk about realist. Uh, let's look at the inside so we can talk about realistically how the sound and feel is gonna be. Obviously, the sound and feel will not be something we can say with 100% certainty, but 
polycarbonate bottom means generally, all right, let me, let me get out my aids. Okay. Uh, polycarbonate bottom means as you type and the sound goes through the keycaps, through the switch, through the plate, through the PCB, and through the bottom, uh, the, the, uh, the polycarbonate bottom will not be able to contain the sounds like an, uh, an aluminum bottom will be able to. That means if, for example, you put your ear on the bottom and type on a polycarbonate vo uh, bottom versus an aluminum bottom, a lot more sound is going to come through on the polycarbonate bottom. So it will be louder is basically what I'm trying to say. So it will be louder. Uh, that probably explains why there's a huge silicone dampening layer right there to try and prevent that. But that could have been prevented in the design phase instead of, you know, after the fact. Uh, in terms of typing feel, we can see that the gasket here essentially connects to the top. So the uh, plate, PCB, and top will just all be smushed into just one layer when it's fully assembled. Uh, this means that there should be a small amount of bounce when you type. So when you press down super hard on a keycap, the plate itself will go down a little bit and then come back up a little bit. And when I say a little bit, it's like it's less than a millimeter, right? It will be a very slightly bouncy typing experience, but the fact that you're making aluminum contact from the plate to aluminum contact on the top means that the, the pitch is going to be slightly high. So it's going to be a slightly high pitch keyboard that has a sound problem coming from the bottom, which if you like that uh, sound profile is totally fine. See, now we're creeping up on, you know, actual keyboard enthusiast, which is all preference. If you're okay with a sound signature like that, where it's going to be slightly higher pitch than, for example, an all aluminum keyboard uh, and slightly louder than an all aluminum keyboard or louder than an all plastic keyboard, then that's okay. So uh, we can see that there is a mid layer for diffusion. So I thought that this was part of the bottom, but it's not. So there is the bottom polycarbonate piece, and then there's an inset layer right there that essentially just helps with the diffusion to make it look cool. This is not at all necessary, but okay, cool. And then uh, there appears to be a internal subframe here, which basically mounts the, uh, the whole assembly to the top, which, okay which then means that the uh, the bottom itself does not actually mount directly into the top. The bottom mounts into the mid piece, which then mounts into the top. There's nothing wrong with doing this at all. So from a, from a sound perspective, it's going to be a little bit loud. It's going to be a little bit higher pitched. It's going to be a little bit more chirpy. Uh, you can tune that, obviously, if you know what you're doing. And then from a uh, feel perspective, it's going to be a little bit bouncy, but when I say a little bit bouncy, I mean you probably won't feel it unless you've really developed the the taste for uh, for typing experience in your fingertips. Otherwise, it'll just feel like a keyboard, and that's the thing. Now we're looking at four hundred dollars for it's just gonna feel like a keyboard, and it's an OEM. So, what would I recommend that you actually buy? Well, if you let, let let's start with just general gaming keyboards, okay? general gaming keyboards. I would recommend a TKL personally for gaming, but we'll go into 65% uh, for people that actually like 65%. Uh, the uh, the Razer, uh, what is it called? It's not Black Widow, it's the other one. Razer keyboard. Yeah, I don't know the name. I apologize. It's the, uh, it's the all uh, Huntsman, there we go, yeah. So, Is this a 65%? Okay, that's not a 65%. And also that's membrane. Okay, so Huntsman. Yep, Huntsman TKL. Hello? Full size, underglow. Is it like a special version? Huntsman, like something? Okay, the TKL version of the Huntsman is a decent keyboard. I have tried it. I just couldn't remember the name. A pretty good keyboard. Obviously, you have to deal with Razer nonsense software, but hey, you can use it. All right. Uh, the next one is the Steel Series. Uh, it's the Hall Effect. So I, I don't know all the marketing names for all these keyboards. Uh, yeah, Apex Pro. There we go. Steel Series Apex Pro. Apex Pro. That is hopefully another TKL, I believe. Yeah, it is a TKL. Mm, keyboards. Maybe it's the non-pro. See, the reason why I don't know the nomenclature is nobody follows any sort of logic. Okay, there we go. Apex Pro TKL. That's actually pretty good. This is pricey. 
But again, the switches here are Hall Effect. That means that they don't require physical contact of completing a circuit by physically having something touch something else. It uses magnets to sense when you've pressed far enough for the switch to actuate. And that's the same thing with the optical keyboard that we saw before from Razer. That is a huge ad, uh, advantage from a typing experience and gaming uh, point of view. For the record, there's no difference between typing experience and gaming. A keyboard that's good for typing is good for gaming, period. But this is another one that I would recommend. Now, if you're looking for a 65%, honestly, you can go as simple as an AND Pro, which is dirt cheap. Okay. Uh, no, uh, there's a AND Pro 65, isn't there? I'm looking like a big dumbass here. Let's find out. It's probably called something else. Uh, okay, so it's just the N Pro 2. Nope, it sure isn't. Okay, so you can't have that. There is the... All right. OEM 65%. We're doing this. We're doing this live. All right, keyboard... KeyboardDabble.com. Thank you, Keyboard Dabble. All right. Yes, 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 yes. Drop Alt. Do not buy a Drop Alt. Buy an OEM. Keychron K6. Super rough. Duroc hit no. No. Warmier, no. I want an OEM. This is actually pretty decent, but this is not an OEM. This is for the the bare entry level of actually getting into being a keyboard enthusiast. Okay. This this is making a lot of recommendations, but not for what I want. What I want is OEMs, like uh, duckies and whatnot. Oh, again, drop alt. Ducky one, yes, the, the Ducky one is good. All of the Ducky keyboards are pretty good. Uh, nope, I'm looking for something else. This is okay, the Miko Push is decent. The Warmier, okay, has come up a couple times, but this is more of a enthusiast. It's super, super cheap, but it is an enthusiast board. For the record, all these boards that we're looking at, all these boards are under a hundred bucks with their keycaps, okay? And realistically, in a blind test, you would not be able to tell the difference in terms of aesthetics, sound, and feel, because you're obviously blindfolded, so you, will, yeah, you wouldn't be able to feel it. My point is, I would rather go for a TKL personally, if you're going to go for something super gamery. Uh, and if you want a 65%, honestly, these guys, Ducky, Keychron is okay, Miko is decent, Warmier is decent. This is okay as well, but all these are super, super cheap keyboards and they're pretty good. Alternatively, where is it? Leopold FC, I believe now it's the FC 750, about 120 bucks will literally last your entire lifetime and you can game on it forever. Downside, no wild RGB. Upside, you can buy three of these and a hamburger for the price of the height so i think i think that's a pro okay i think that's the whole thing that's it that's the whole video let's 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 just we'll we'll close it up all right one it's expensive two it's an oem three there's a lot of red flags for for it being an oem like limited unit run like pre-order uh Five, it's a special purpose vehicle company, so iBuyPower is trying to minimize its risk. Six, they're claiming to have input, design input from big keyboard influencers. They don't. It's nonsense. Uh, it's expensive. I know that was number one, but that goes in there twice. I would think twice before getting into something like this, personally. If you want a good gaming keyboard? Buy a good gaming keyboard. That is good. Don't buy something that doesn't exist yet that costs at least twice what it should actually cost. That's my take. And uh, if you made it this far in the video, I'm going to kiss this alligator. <laughs>